Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of Power Talk. Our conversation with Old Mutual Group continues, and we're so pleased today to be speaking to the Old Mutual East Africa Group CEO, Arthur Oginga. Thank you very much Thank you uh, for, having me. for joining us. So um, we'll talk about your uh, half one 2023 results in a minute because you know there was some good numbers there and to see what that portends for the future. Um, but let's talk about the market trends that you, um, you know, are, are taking a look at and some of the competitive factors that you think um, have influenced the development of your company's strategy. Thank you very much for that question. Um, Old Mutual is an integrated financial services company. We offer investment solutions, short-term insurance, life insurance as well as banking th services through Faulu, uh, which is one of our subsidiaries. Um, through 2020, 2021, has, 2023 has obviously been a, a good year for us, and, and thank you for uh, the kind words. What we try to do as a business is provide products that are relevant to customers, and through our integrated financial solutions uh, we and, and through our multi-channel distribution we offer customers products which are relevant to their needs um, the objective being that at any one time convenience uh, is important uh, for the for the customer um, our our solutions remain relevant through the lifetime of, of customers I'll give you a couple of, of uh, things we have done over the last couple of months. COVID obviously changed how we operate, how we interact with each other, how we work. Same thing with our customers, how they interact with us, how they um, interact with our, our providers has changed. Um, we introduced telemedicine, meds on wheels, uh, and telecounseling. Uh, in response to those changing uh, needs. Digital has become a big factor. Uh, we have over 8 million internet uh, users in the country, 30% penetration rate, yeah. growing annually at about a million new users a year. In response, we have uh, developed a new application. It's called My Own Mutual App. We will continue to load it with products. It is now helping us engage digitally with both our customers as well as um, intermediaries. Cyber risk is also becoming a big factor, uh, which many of our customers are talking to us about and how we can secure them through that. Uh, climate, which mm -hmm. is becoming a topical um, subject, yeah. especially with uh, El Nino we have now. Uh, we are looking at climate um, covers that can protect our customers through, through the changes. Um, I think a key one that is changing the way uh, investment solutions are offered is we see trustees starting to question uh, investing decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, we call it responsible business, ensuring that we are investing in products or businesses that operate or promote sustainable uh, activities. That's another pressure point. Uh -huh. And finally, I'd say, you know, we opened, in terms of channels, we've opened two new branches mm -hmm. in Nairobi and Mombasa in the recent past, which offer an integrated uh, services you can get all our all our services under one roof yeah and it's it's uh, the idea of ensuring that they're not moving from one office to another to look for uh, the various uh, services that you provide so i mean i guess that calls for flexibility and agility right um you know that you have a strategy but that it must continue to be flexible um you know with the uh, emerging um you know, threats, challenges, or shall we say needs, right? So how do you keep a team that's flexible and agile to, to respond to this? 
Our, our strategy is built around thematic pillars, which allows for adaptability, flexibility, allows for us to react to unforeseen challenges, as well as to capitalize on uh, emerging opportunities. In executing our strategy, we are guided by a couple of principles. Three re very relevant ones are customers and being putting customers at the center of what we do, uh, being agile, and making data-driven de decisions. Uh, on the customer front, uh, both customers and inter intermediaries have been driving a more, or opting for a more digitally way of engaging with them. Mm. Um, and we have invested in solutions that are helping us have self-service uh, channels for them. Uh, on the data side, we have invested in AI and machine learning models that are helping us to come up with more personalized products, personalized pricing for customers, and driving efficiencies in some of our processes. And that's interesting. Can we talk about then um, your first half of 2023? Um, strong growth and value of new businesses, um, you know, declared an interim dividend. It looks like it was a good first half of the year. What do you think um, drove this growth or what would you attribute it to? And while at it, what's your outlook for the second half of 2023? Before I start getting calls tomorrow morning, <laughs> we did not declare the interim dividend. Okay, yes. <laughs> um, so we had a strong first half. Mm -hmm. um, top line growing quite strongly, mm -hmm. well above inflation. Um, our operating profit before finance costs was uh, 2 billion shillings up from break even last year. We recorded a profit before tax last year, we had a loss. Um, the key drivers being top line uh, growth, maintaining costs uh, or, or main ensuring costs uh, are uh, kept um, flat. However, um, we had one key uh, factor that has been driving down performance, which is our debt. Mm -hmm. And I'm very pleased to say that this morning we had an AGM where our shareholders approved a debt restructure uh, that will allow us to convert some of the dollar debt into local currency and reduce the stranglehold on the, mm. uh, on the business. Yeah. However, um, the most important thing driving that growth is the focus we have on customers. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen customer numbers grow, our top line growth has been maintained. So, second half of the year? Second half, um, we will maintain the trajectory. And I think with the, the decision that has been made today, a stronger uh, outcome in the second half of the year. You talk about customer centricity being, um, you know, at the heart of, of, of driving the growth. Um, you know, what sort of trends are you seeing in terms of, you know, customer needs? What what do you think is driving that? I mean, I know you said uh, the idea of them wanting some more, uh, you know, nuanced services and, and AI is helping with, with getting a very clear understanding of that. Uh, but what more can be done to enable customers uptake more of these services that you provide uh, from insurance into the other financial solutions? What more can be done to ensure that uh, uh, they take up these services more? Thank you. That's, that's actually at the heart of mm -hmm. the insurance industry today. Yeah. Penetration yeah. levels are not where they need to be. We believe, amongst many other factors, we believe a key one is financial literacy. Uh, customers understanding and developing good habits around savings, understanding our products, um, understanding how they can sustain, grow, and protect the prosperity. We have, uh, as All Mutual, we have partnered with the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. Uh, I think very positive that they have decided that financial literacy needs to be embedded in the junior secondary school curricula. We have supported them 
through that process and we've supported them in the rollout of um, that program uh, into schools. We just had, uh, they just concluded a pilot um, and there is also quite encouraging. Not only are the students and learners more engaged financially, mm -hmm. but as a result of that, we are seeing communities, because of the teachers, yeah. communities getting more engaged about financial literacy. Um, it's something that we want to keep promoting. Uh, at a university level, we have over the last year through our foundation, run literacy programs in literally most of our public uh, universities. At the last count, I think we had uh, put through training over 11,000 students on financial literacy. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Nyeri uh, at one of the universities there, and they had invited us back the second year. Uh -huh just in time for the first year intake because the prior year was very useful. Yeah. So those kind of programs I think will make a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, they're long term, but I think our commitment to ensuring that financial literacy improves yeah. is something we, are, we hold dear as all mutual. Yeah, so catch them early, catch them when they're young, uh, and start to inculcate those principles. Um, and then what happens now when you onboard them? Um, you know, one of the questions um, you, know, you get about insurance, insurance products, and the financial solutions is they can sometimes be complex. Um, so now you've done the financial literacy and they know what they want and then they come to all mutual then how do you ensure that that onboarding process uh, for customers like you said you know you provide them all these services uh, you know throughout their lifetime what's key in terms of uh, just helping customers have an easier seamless experience with with your products and maybe you know as the insurance sector as a whole um the way we look at uh, um our services and products is actually quite simple. We try to ensure our customers stay well, uh, whether it's financial, whether it's uh, your physical health, your mental health. The goal is to maintain wellness. Mm. Uh, all of us have our ambitions and our financial objectives. What we do is help through our advisor and agency network. We have what we call advisor-led conversations. We listen to the customer. We understand the customer's financial objectives um, over a longer mm -hmm. period. Um, it is only after listening to the objectives do we bring in our products. And we then try to explain um, in a simple manner how our products are tailored to or match the needs of the customer. Um, again, focusing on your long-term, your personal long-term objectives. Your objectives are not the same as mine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so we ensure that whatever we do is tailored to the individual's needs. The conversations between our advisors and customers uh, we call them confidential, trust-led uh, conversations uh, and maintained over the lifetime of customers. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's a good place to leave it uh, and a good understanding in terms of ensuring that customers' individual needs are met. They're not the same, but uh, they can definitely be catered to. We thank you for that. Congratulations on half one. Uh, looking forward to half two. We thank you for making the time for us uh, here on Power Talk. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, that's been the old Mutual East Africa Group CEO, Arthur Oginga, on Power Talk today, talking about customer centricity at the heart of everything they do.